What's up everybody? Welcome back or to the channel. So today we're going to be doing another project on my golf simulator. And what we're going to be doing is relocating my golf simulation setup from my basement to my garage. So by moving the golf simulator to the garage, I have a little bit more ceiling height. So I already started building the frame for the new golf simulator screen for the garage. So without further ado, let's jump in and check it out. Okay, so we are in my garage and this is gonna be the new screen area over here. Now the new screen that I'm going with because I have a taller ceiling in the garage, I decided to try out a new golf impact screen that I did get from Amazon. And the new screen size is gonna be close to 13 feet wide by almost 10 feet tall. The screen that I had in my basement previous to this setup was eight by 14. So it was eight foot high by 14 foot wide. But out here, I wanted to go a little taller. And because of this main shaft beam here, I have just enough space to fit a 13 by 10 screen. So I went ahead and I framed everything out. Very, very simple. I just went and took a longer two by six here. I think this was like a 14 foot two by six and I cut it down a little shorter to fit and I cut that 14 foot two by six a little shorter. The side walls are 12 foot two by fours, which I was able to mount pretty much top to bottom. Now on this side here, I had to do a little bit of a cut out here with some two by sixes to get around this little concrete barrier here. And then I mounted everything on the side walls top and then mounted to the floor. So that's pretty stationary there. Then I went ahead and took some 12 foot two by fours, cut them a little bit shorter and used them as braces in the middle. Now I reset them towards the back, as you can see here, the two by four is towards the back, giving me a little bit more space in the front because I wanted a little bit more flex in the screen. But I added the two by fours as braces to stop this long two by six on the top from bowing a little bit. Then I went ahead and took the metal strut channels that I had designed for the basement screen, disassembled them all, and I just screwed them to the outer lip of this two by six frame right here. And this way with the strut channel, I have plenty of holes that I can actually add my bungees to wrap around there. So by reusing the strut channel, I don't have to go out and buy more of those little eye hooks that you screw into the two by sixes for the bungees to attach to. This is much more sturdier. So again, I got the whole frame done. Everything's level and mounted there. So I ended up just adding some black curtains along the top and on the side here, just, just temporarily for now. I did go ahead and block the window that's behind that curtain for now. So I got that done. I did go ahead and remove that center beam right there because I just didn't want to have that in the way of being the center shot and having most of my balls ricochet off of it. So I did remove the center beam. It still seems to be pretty sturdy, so I'm good with that. So the next thing I want to do is just staple a couple comforters up here and have them hanging down so that when I hang the screen in front of it, the comforters behind it acts as a buffer to take some of the impact pressure off the screen. So I'll be doing that. I did go ahead and get my laptop mount hooked up over here to the window. So again, it just swivels around right here. Again, this is all just temporary for now and it does come down and it comes up. So that right there is mounted. And then I did go ahead and get my projector mounted to the ceiling here. So again, that's mounted and I just have the power and HDMI hung up over here, down through there where it's gonna connect to my laptop. So I have that done. So the next thing I have to do is open up the screen and let's start testing this out. Okay, so I got this impact screen from this company right here. They're available on Amazon. I wanted to try out this screen because it got a lot of really good reviews and it came in very inexpensive. My previous golf impact screen that I was using in my basement was close to $900. This is a fraction of the cost. So I wanted to try it out and see how it goes. And if interested in this product, I'll put a link in the description as well. So if we open it up, it comes with a nice bag here. Okay, we got that open. Let's take this out. So it does have a little instruction guide here to kind of show you how to hook everything up. Pretty basic and simple. Here is your screen right here. And it does come with some ball bungees here. Now I may or may not be using these ones here because I already have larger ones that I was using on my previous impact screen that I brought up here to try to use. But either way, I already have my own bungees to use, but if you don't happen to have bungees, I just wanted to let you know that they do come with them. So we'll set those aside. So once I open it up a little bit, the material seems very strong. It's, it's, it's almost like a nylon material, but it feels very strong. It doesn't feel soft and spongy and flexible like my other impact screen. This actually feels very tough. So I really like that. 
The outer perimeter is more of like a thick double stitch nylon that feels really strong as well. It does have grommets every so many feet as well for your bungees to attach to. So that's good there. Now this particular screen here is a larger screen. So it's not a 16-9 ratio or even a 16-10. It's a little bit of an off size ratio because I wanted it to fit this space here, which is a little bit of an oddball size. But this screen is going to be 157 inches wide by I believe 118 inches tall. So it's roughly 13 by roughly 10. So let me go ahead, let me staple some blankets up there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take the screen and start attaching it using the bungee cords and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. So I went ahead and I got the screen attached with the bungee cords all the way around. Couple wrinkles in it, but that's expected for a large screen that shows up in a box folded up. But I'm sure over time those wrinkles will come out. If not, I'll just have to bring a handheld steamer out here to steam some of the wrinkles out. But overall, it looks pretty good. The quality feels pretty good. Have a nice little bit of flex here as well. I did go ahead and hang three old comforters from the ceiling, just kind of stapled them and let them hung down. And then I did tuck a few old couch pillows behind here as well, just to dampen some of that impact force when you're hitting the screen. Now you don't have to do it that way. That's just what I've always done because I feel like it softens the impact so that it doesn't hit so hard and then bounce back so hard at you. I started laying down some of my green carpets here. I still have a stack over here that I can use. For now, I just laid down a few just to get an idea. I'll still have to figure out a border of how I wanna do the border to hide the bungees. But again, this is a work in progress, but let me go ahead and move the bike out of the way. I did just order a new golf mat. This is a larger five by five, which is gonna sit right here. So I'll probably add another one or two rows of the green carpet, and then I'll sit my golf mat there. So let me go ahead and get my laptop set up, and we'll be right back to see how this screen looks. I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, so we got a few things hooked up here. I still have to make some adjustments to the resolution on my laptop to make sure it's projecting correctly on the screen. But I played around with some of the resolutions and I think I got most of it to fit the screen. But so far it looks really good. So I have my new golf mat right here. I have my SkyTrack set up right over there. So we're just running TGC 2019 and we're at the driving range. So let's go ahead and hit a few balls and see how it goes. Now I have my tee set up roughly at about nine and a half feet away from the screen. So I'm trying a few different distant positions for my tee from the screen to see what works best. So right now we're about nine and a half feet. So let's just see how it goes. Oh, I'm in the water. Still about 206. Fairly straight, 200 and about 38 yards. And if you look at my swing path over here, it's really not that bad. A little bit to the left, close the face a little bit. That felt good. to 252. So as far as driving goes, at about nine and a half feet back from the screen, it seems to be holding up pretty well. Let's try a, a seven iron. This new golf mat feels pretty good on the feet, so I like that. one on a seven iron. Let's try that again. Yeah, I closed that face. I, my swing path was going from out to in on that one. Okay, 
Let's see if I can get a little bit of a straighter shot here. Hit another seven on our hand, see if I can get it out there a little bit better. That's not good. Hundred and seventy. 176 yards on a 7 iron, not too bad there. Fairly straight. Swing pass needs a little work. That was right down the middle. No, not too bad. Let's do a business shot. Welcome, Welcome to the golf club. My name's Joe. I see you've chosen to play Fiddler's Green. This is a gorgeous course. Wide open spaces. Just off on Highway 41 in Pembroke, Ontario. Let's have a good round. Okay, here we go. Try to drive this pretty good. Two sixty one, two sixty two, not too bad. Swing path is still out to like end. Let's go ahead and change our direction a little bit. Let's see if I can get out that way more. Get through the trees, get through them. There we go. I'll take it. 102, nothing great. Okay, where are we at? Get there. Get on there. There we go. Bad. Let's get our putter out. All right, 12 footer here. Putting on the sky track is a little tricky. I think I hit that a little too hard. Yep, too hard. Oh well. Okay, so at the end of the day, this new budget-friendly golf impact screen is holding up pretty well. Again, I still have a few wrinkles to get out, and I still have to adjust my bungee cord over here to kind of pull this corner down a little bit to get that a little bit more flatter and get some of those wrinkles out. But overall, the playability is fine. Again, right now I have my tee set up at about nine and a half feet back from the screen. And as I showed you, I was hitting some 250 yard drives right at the screen and the bounce back really wasn't that bad. I tried a seven iron, that worked out perfectly well too. I think the image quality looks fine. The playability is fine. The bounce back is very little, so it's not even really that bad. And I'm really happy with this screen overall. Okay, everybody, so there you go. So as I just demonstrated, the new Golf Impact screen is working out pretty well. I was hitting the driver and some irons at about nine and a half feet away from the screen, and everything worked fine. The clarity of the screen is really good. The overall playability is really good. The bounce back from the ball impacting into the screen is very minimal. So at the end of the day, after playing on this screen a little bit, I really don't see much of a difference between this screen and a screen that costs eight or nine hundred dollars. I'm perfectly happy with this one. So my overall impressions of this budget friendly golf impact screen, I'm going to go ahead and give it a thumbs up and give it a go. So that's it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out. 
Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and like this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you one more time. Thank you. I truly appreciate you all. And as always, see you in the next video.